see these packages, I don't know what is in them. Wait, I don't know what's in these packages. I know it's in this one, because I've already opened it. There are brush pens. Oh wow, that is pretty nice. These brush pens look like they're very similar to those Anko watercolour brush pens that I bought earlier from Kmart. And the reason why I don't know what's in these packages is because I didn't buy them. Because recently a friend has been sending me mysterious packages without telling me what's actually inside them. I certainly hope what's inside these are pen related, because I do like pens. So let's see what's in this one. Or what could it be? <laughs> That's funny. It's a car pen. Does it actually work as a car? I want to know. Is it a wind up car? No. It's got wheels at work though. Excellent. Now my art can really go places. That's great. <laughs> oh, that, okay, that was short-lived. Typical me, just pulling things apart, put that back together. You know, I'm gonna challenge myself with all of these mysterious packages. I'm gonna try and make art out of whatever I find in these packages. So, so far we've got a ballpoint pen car. So. <laughs> uh, it's a little, a little plastic spanner. It was like a little magnet on it or something. Hmm. Got this little knife. Oh, oh yes. Look at that. Now I have a magnetic pen and a fake spanner. Now it's time to open up this big one. Make an incision just along here, very gently. There we go. What's in here? I think it might be pens. I actually don't know what's in here, to be honest. Is this pens? No. That's not pens at all. Oh, it's my new backpack. How am I, how am I meant to make art out of this? I can't make art out of this. I didn't even think this was in the country yet. I was suspicious of the big one. I didn't think it actually contained pens. Belt bag is also perfect for making art that can fit lots of... A5 size sketchbooks in it. Look at that. But anyway, I mean, it may look very realistic, but I don't think this is a functional spanner somehow. And what I'm really curious about is how these watercolour brush pens compare to the watercolour brush pens from Kmart, the Anko branded ones. I believe this packet is from eBay and it's black, so that should narrow down the brand for you. And it also comes with a refillable water brush. When I was using these, I found a refillable water brush to be very handy. So let's start by putting some water inside this water brush. The screws are always reversed on these things. I don't know why. I'm going to cut up this packaging and see if I can draw on that. Let's try out the orange. Hmm. Very orange. It seems to be a bit on the dry side. I don't know. Gets better the more you use it. Try some blue. There's a fair bit of mixing there. There's a lot of mixing. It's mixing all right. Now let's see how this water brush affects it. Oh yeah, that dissolves. Certainly a water-soluble dye-based ink. Oh, the light blue seems to be less water-soluble than the... Uh, Mm -hmm. Just make some black outlines on my experimental scribbles. Much like the Anko ones from Kmart, these eBay brush pens, if they are from eBay, I'm not sure, also have a genuine nylon brush head. Like there are actual bristles on the brush. You know what, they more or less seem to be very similar to the Anko branded ones. This is Anko. What's it like? Actually, the brush tips on the Anko, they feel slightly softer and less like scratchy. These black eBay ones seem to be uh, a lot firmer. The actual bristles seem to be thicker. They have more spring to them. And the Anko brush has got a softer, finer hairs on it. 
I do prefer the softer brush heads of the Anko brush pens, but these ones are still very good. Okay, now it's time to get serious with these brush pens. I'm going to use actual watercolour paper, and I'm also going to use my race car and my spanner. Hello there, so welcome to the time lapse part of the video where I talk too much and say too little. So first off, we're going to start drawing with the race car ballpoint pen. So can something form the function of a toy as well as a pen? Seems so. After playing with it for a little while, making it drive backwards and forwards on my piece of paper, I started drawing with it. And I quickly discovered that it's not a very ergonomic thing to hold. The little rubberized spinning wheels are in the perfect location where I would want to grip the pen. So the thing is kind of working at cross purposes, isn't it? Wheels are designed to minimize friction and grip is designed to maximize friction. And this pen doesn't know what it's trying to do with its life, really. I think this pen was designed as a toy foremost. Anyway, due to its unergonomic nature, I just started sketching with it as quickly as possible. I decided to draw some monkeys because I have really never drawn monkeys before. And doing something for the first time that you're not familiar with, recording it and uploading it on the internet, is always a good idea. I mean, everyone does it, don't they? How many times have you looked up a tutorial only to discover that the person who's trying to teach you something knows hardly any more than you and are basically making it up as they go along and then you get to watch glue drying in real time and I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I think I digressed a bit then. Where was I going with that? No, I have lost my train of thought. Monkeys, that's right. I'm drawing monkeys. Anyway, this is not a tutorial and I'm not trying to teach you anything. This is purely for entertainment. Although I question the entertainment value of watching someone draw with a race car pen. But if you find it only one quarter as entertaining as I did, uh, I think we have a winner. This pen definitely was built for speed. It was designed to be a winner. And it also encourages you to draw really fast because it's really uncomfortable to hold. And then I progressed to the eBay watercolour pens. And they seem quite nice. I noticed that earlier. Now, I was expecting a bigger difference on watercolour paper, to be honest. Last time I had used similar watercolour pens on non-watercolour paper, and I tried to get the best effect out of them possible, and it turned out okay. And I was hoping that putting it on real watercolour paper would enable me to push the colours around on the paper better with the watercolour brush without the paper falling apart. Unfortunately, a lot of these dye inks and these pens seem to stain paper so well that they don't like moving around as much as I would expect. Like I showed you earlier how well the ink activates off the paper with the water brush on that paper that came off the packaging, but this watercolour paper, not so much. The inks just seem to stick there a lot better. So to get some lighter shades and also better watercolour effects, I found it was a lot easier just to wet the paper first and then apply the pens to the paper. How many times have I said the word paper? Goodness me. So that turned out okay. Then I tried it again, but I put down that race car pen and instead I picked up the spanner pen. The perfect pen for any artist that has a screw loose. Well, no, it's a spanner. That would have worked if it was a screwdriver, actually. I found the spanner pen to be a lot more ergonomic. Very easy to hold, very easy to grip, quite comfortable, actually. And it also came with black ink which I much prefer over blue ink. And in my experience, black ink usually lasts a lot longer than blue ink as well, as far as longevity is concerned anyway. Better light fastness, that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I continued drawing some monkeys and you know what I find? I find that when you're drawing something or doing virtually anything new, the first time I do it, I have like beginner's luck or something. And I stand back and say, you know, for my first time, that's, that's pretty good. I can give myself a good pat on the back. That's excellent. Yes, if that's what I can do first time with, you know, hardly any practice. Imagine what I'll be able to do next time. So I get excited and I try it again and the results are usually worse, much worse. The only reason why I think this might be the case is maybe the overconfidence I've gained from my first experience doesn't actually help me improve at all next time round. A proud person struggles to learn basically. Do they still make those Fisher-Price red and yellow cars? Like the big ones? Don't know. Then I did a third drawing, still keeping with the monkey theme. But this time I really slowed down and I took my time. I really studied the references I had opened up. 
Hang on, maybe I'll put this jacket over my head. So I found this image of like Marquettes, I think it was. Future me here, it's pronounced macaque. I think that's the species of monkey I was drawing here. And I studied it and I looked at it and I looked at the fur patterns and I just tried to relax. I tried to get into the flow, the state of flow that I keep on hearing so much about. But I haven't been entering recently because, because I've been a bit impatient, to be honest. I've been very impatient. Sometimes my impatience comes from the fact that I am aware that I have a camera rolling, which does encourage me to draw without stopping as much. But I never actually feel truly relaxed while um, filming myself, while drawing. I think my art actually suffers a little bit because of that. I think this time around I mostly overcame all of those illogical, psychological dilemmas and I managed to just slow myself down. Yep, I'm currently recording audio but with a jacket over my head to try and cut down on echo and other noises that are coming from outside my room. And you know, it's just, just not working. I just can't breathe. How does that sound? Does that sound any different? I have no idea. It was an interesting experiment anyway. I'm eager to find out the results. You know what amazes me about ballpoint pens? How versatile they are. You can always shade with them like a pencil. It's amazing. Okay, the jacket's going back on. Hang on. I think this jacket is pretty good, don't you think? It's like the cone of silence or something out of Get Smart. Except it's very dark in here. So I was about to add some watercolour to these final monkeys I had done with those eBay watercolour pens. But the monkey looked at me straight in the eyes and said to me, I'm finished. I don't need anything else. I'm fine just the way I am. So I said, okay, okay. I won't add watercolour to you then. Maybe another time. But um, for now, these monkeys are finished. They are complete. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I've said enough. So have a look at my monkeys and I will say goodbye. Farewell.